Hi, welcome back everybody. This is video 18, I think. Yes, video 18. In the last one we started on the rigging and we put all these on. I showed you how to do this one and this one with the two blocks, but we didn't do the um, the four stay of the foremast, um, which is a different going on down here at the bottom of the bowsprit so I'll take you through that because it's a little bit different not difficult but different so what we need is that one is E which is there so we need two single hole blocks one two and obviously the thread and we'll do that so i'll get a couple of blocks So if I can just explain it a little bit. We've got one block here which has got that line attached. We've got one block there which is attached to the main forestay. And that is just a loop. So we'll start off by attaching a line to that one, that short one, and attaching the main. The main one to it. So we'll do those. Let's see if we can get you a bit closer in. So again with the hole towards me. Oh, so small. Put that in there. I'm actually going to change sides of this camera because I do most of the work on the other side. I think looking at the last video you saw most of my hands rather than what I was doing. Okay, there we go. Change it over. So I'll do the short one first. Obviously it's all in the thicker cord. So, same as before. through, making sure it's in the groove of the block. Don't forget if you're just joining us to uh, subscribe to the channel if you will. It's growing nicely but uh, I know the next one's going to be exciting because it's the uh, um, model of the blue nose. Was a, a schooner back in the day used to fishing and racing in the America's Cup and it's going to be the fully fully ribbed version with only one side of it planked and the ribs all exposed on the other side looks quite a nice model right so that's tied on there then we give it a pull turn it into two half inches And a bit of thread for binding it. Again, if you've got the same kit and you're doing this, you might need to buy some. Because I don't think there's enough thread in this. Not the right sort anyway. And most of this that I'm using is what's left over from the victory. So we're going to make the loop. Hold that against it. And 
just wrap it round and round. Keeping it fairly tight. Usually do about six or eight turns. I'll do. And hold on to it all. Find your loop. There. Feed that end through, either up or down. Still keep hold of it until you've got that loop pulled in. Now that's pulled down to the knot. Then you can tighten everything a little bit. And then just pull it into the bindings. And there we are. If it'll come into focus, there we go. There we are. That's that one. So that's going to be the short one, so I'll cut that off fairly short. And then do the same again. For the longer one. Use that again. And then this one needs to be enough to go from here somewhere here up to here a bit to tight on and that's wrong that's wrong because The long one's right, the short one's wrong, because the short one has to be threaded through that block. And that's not going to thread through, so we'll have to do it in this thin. Should have known that. Okay, so we've got the two there now. Let's run them through the beeswax. Short one is threaded through the the other one, so I'll do that first. It's good old super glue again.
There we go. Just estimate roughly where that's going to go. So it's somewhere. There, that I guess. And then we need to tie this round here. And holes round twice. There we go. And then we need a loop to hold that one in place. So again, it's a thin thread. Cut the length off rather than working with the spool. This has got to be threaded as well, don't forget. So we need a we need one end in the super glue again. Cut the end off at an angle again. And then we can start off actually by threading it through there. Oh, it appear to be blocked. If that happens, um, you just need to you need to have a set of these very thin drills. You can see they're from 0.3 of a millimeter. 0.4. These are so small, it's unbelievable. You wouldn't think they were drills. Um, like a needle. Just try running that through. That goes through okay. There we go. I need a bit of dust in there to stop something going through it. Right, and then just need to tie this off on here as well. Again, twice round. There we go. And then see it all pull into shape. And then tie that one off. There we are. Not bad. And then we just need to make the top off. Should be getting seasick with me moving this camera around like this. Anyway, right, we just wrap around there temporary. Again, we just, we just don't want to pull it too tight because you don't want to, you don't want things pulling out of shape. But you still need the rigging to be fairly taut. Tweezers again. So bad. Okay. There we are. Let's say you can finish those ends off. Whip them up the 
sides there if you want. I think with it being so short, I might just uh, cut those off. Yeah. And we'll see. But that's it. That's how to do that one. So we'll look at what needs to be done next. Okay, here we go. A different day. Same boat. Um, yesterday we, well, in the last bit, we did this bit on the bowsprit. And I was saying about finishing the ends off. Uh, I don't know if I can get close enough for you to see, but I cheated. Um, but it's quite effective. If you just take the ends and just wrap them round and then just hold it fairly tight and just with a cocktail stick just put a little dab of super glue on just hold it for a couple of seconds and then cut the end off and it actually looks like it's been whipped um, so it's quite effective so I did that anyway if you want to do that um, the next bit we come on to is the uh, shrouds and the chain plates which are on to try and get closer on here I'm going to go to the other side again with the camera bear with me seems to work better this side I am left-handed but you just seem to do most with the other hand right so I've got all the chain plates and you can see them here I've, I've blacked them all I didn't need to show you how to black stuff again but I don't want that brass finish so I've uh, I've put them in the aging fluid and then what we need to do is we need to bend them to the right angle um, if we just look at the uh, plan um, you can see them here but it's showing two holes but these the ones they give us here I've only got one but it doesn't matter so we need to get that we need to get them bent like that to follow the shape of the hull you can see on here these I've got these angles and the easiest way of doing it is I use my favorite pliers again with a flat blade on one side and a point on the other and you just set yourself a point so I go by the triangle at the end and I just put the end of the blade there against where the triangle meets the the main part and then which way does it bend Bends away from there, wrong way around. Just do it the right way. So there, and then I can just bend that slightly like that. And then the other end, what I've used as a gauge is the point. And I've lined the point up with going to show you doesn't focus very well but with the edge here so I'll put the point in until it's there so I'm getting focus there we go so you can see the point lines up just with the top of the shaping and then you can just give it a little bend that's it and then you make them all the same 
and then when you come to fit them you need to have what I've done is I've tied on I've tied on one piece it's not where it's where the shrouds go so they're tied it's tied around there on top of the bottom mast and then it gives you the angle that you need so you can take one of the chain plates and hold it on there that's where it goes so it's slotted right down and then you can get the angle right by holding this temporary shroud in place you get the angle of it right and then just with a little hand drill just drill through like that and then we should be able to take I black the nails as well don't like brush showing it's horrible makes it look like something you get from a gift shop so I have to use my pliers I need to get another pair of tweezers out well, I'll use my pliers for now so hold that in place and then that should locate in there It's all going to be a bit tricky. There we go. So you've got that in the right, in the right place. And it's at the right angle. I don't think you can see it's at the right angle there from that view. There you go. So it didn't actually bang on the right angle there. And just work your way along and same on the other masts so i'll get all those on and then uh, come back and do some rigging putting all the shrouds on um, i'm not too happy about the way uh, they're putting these dead eyes on because it's just showing them as uh, held on with brass wire just pushed through I don't see that, how that's going to hold the uh, tension of the shrouds. But we'll see. I'll have a go and see what I think. Might find a different way of doing that. Right, and the last one. I'm just bend it into shape. nail through and put super glue too much then you gotta be quick with the super glue otherwise you gotta hammer them in There we go. That's the last one. So, there we are. All done and all at the right angles. You see. I'm going to get 
fine with that. I'm looking through the camera and they don't look as though they're in line, but they are. That's because the camera lens is that end. There we are, look. So they're all in line. Oh, that one isn't. You've got to be careful with that one. Because that gun port gets in the way. So you've just got to be careful with that one. Just put it at an angle. It doesn't really matter. I had that problem on the Victory. There we are. So they're all in line. All done on both sides. That's it for now. Right, so I've got all those on. All the way around. We've now got to put these on. And it shows you them held on with two or nine, and it says brass wire. And the only brass wire is this that's supplied in the kit, and it is very soft. So I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. Can't say they've been enough to do it all either, but I have got some more of this. But I'm not holding my breath as to how it's going to work. Straighten it a bit first. Okay, there goes nothing. I'm not happy already. That's rubbish. I'm never going to get them even. Cut it off, see what happens. Not a lot, I'm guessing. Right, it's too wide for one thing. Just got to find a way of doing it. I just thought I'd show you me having an attempt at it. But that didn't work. I'll find a way. I'll come back. Right, I think I found the way. So. You need to get it to length first, get the right length off. This is the one I was playing around with before. All right. This is the one I was playing around with before. And I've just straightened it out again. And then, take your copper wire, and make sure you cut it.
exactly to the right length. And you'll need various pliers for this. So I've got these are my favourite ones flat blade and pointed blade. And I've got these, which are rounded tips on both of them. So, what I found is, if you're trying to keep this in camera, if I put a little bend on there first, just on the end, 90 degrees, and the same on the other end. Ninety degrees, and then take your dead eye, and put it in the center, and just fold it around without stabbing yourself. The ends of the wires twist over, but it doesn't matter. You'll get them in a minute. Pull them round evenly, keep in the groove, push it into the slot at the top. Of course the one I'm showing you doesn't hasn't gone evenly, has it? I just need to pull that round a bit. Nip those up together. Make sure everything's still in the groove. Pushed into the top there. And you can see how they're twisted sideways, but just bend them back again. Just bend them outwards. And with these, just pinch it in, pinch it in like that, and then just bend these over a bit more as required to get them to 90 degrees. Like that. Just play around with them getting straightened out. But then the way they work is where are we? Where can you see? So you can see on that one. You put this in first. with pliers, tweezers, whatever you find easiest. So you put that in, put one side in, pull the other across, drop that side in, and then, it is a bit tricky, but it can be done. You've just got to pop the dead eye back in like that. There we go. It's not going to pull out, it's quite strong actually, it's surprising when you get a shorter piece of this wire. But it's not going to pull out when you get the rigging on everything. So, I mean this is probably going to take more than uh, the time I've got to do this video. Um, because I want to black them all as well, I'm not putting, uh, not putting them on this colour. Works so well I can't get it out again. Anyway, I can do that. So I'll do a few more and black them up and put them in. Whether I get it done on this video or not, I don't know. But we will see. If not, I'll see you in the next one. I'll try and get some done. Right, so I've got six of them made. And I'll pick one up. 
and I've got them blacked as well. So we're ready to go. So let's see if we can do the main one here. Fingers crossed. There we go. Right, that's in. That's in. That's one. Hopefully it'll get easier. It got easier to bend. That's in. That's in. So they're all in. That's it, and then I'll stand up and pull up straight when uh, start putting the uh, the shrouds on. So I've got them all on one side and they seem to be okay. I've still got this side to do. Let's turn it around. There we are, they're all on. Still not very happy with them. But these will all pull up into the tops of the loops when the when the rigging goes on. Um, when the shrouds go on, that's the next job, I think. I'll finish the other side. I'm still making some more here. Got some left over that were blacked, and just started making some more. So we'll get the other side done, which you'll see in the next video, and then we'll start on the shrouds. So it's quite a tricky. And long job that, but uh, a bit of patience, just steady away and you'll get it done. Mm -hmm.